Hey, it's Jared. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the 11th generation Kindle. This is the 2022 edition, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on this device. I've had probably about 10 different Kindle devices uh, since the original Kindle, and I'd say upgrading from time to time is something that is valuable to do because Kindles are not the most powerful device and over time things files become larger some of these books become bigger with more assets and stuff like that and upgrading uh, may bring features that make it worth it to you so we're going to talk a little bit about this device being that this is the new entry level Kindle uh, essentially from Amazon um, I've got the 16 gigabyte edition here this is uh, the 2022 edition that has the six inch glare free display with 300 ppi so that's 300 pixels per inch it's got weeks of battery life a built-in light and best of all it's charged via usb-c which is something that was driving me up the wall about my kindle oasis now i still actually have the kindle oasis and i don't use it as much simply because it's a little bit bigger of a device and so not as friendly to carry as this little guy. It doesn't charge via USB-C and although it has some great features that I like, it's just not as convenient as using my phone. But this little device here is very nice and convenient and we're going to take a look at how it feels to operate this uh, Kindle, this new edition. So I have the fabric case on the Kindle right now. I also have a video where I reviewed a whole stack of cases and so this whole stack of cases I've looked at. These are the top rated cases that I found on Amazon and that is coming soon in a video so make sure to check that out if you find that interesting subscribe to the channel here and you'll be notified when those videos are released so this Kindle I really like because it seems to be a little bit snappier even than the Kindle Oasis that I've had for a number of years now which is still the current version of the Kindle Oasis uh, what I like about it is it has relatively small bezels not super small uh, but small enough to where even if I wasn't using this with a case it's easy to hold um, without actually touching the display on accident which would then turn the page and so I, I really like like holding it in the case with a finger pinched between the cover and the back of the device here. That's a very comfortable way for me to hold the device. And then if I'm going left-handed, there's enough for me to hold on here that I feel like the device is secure in my hand and I'm not going to drop it. Um, without a case, it's still manageable, but I find a case making it a little bit easier to hold onto this device because it is so small. Now, the entry-level Kindle editions don't have buttons. This one doesn't have any buttons. It's all touch, and it's very responsive, I found. So when I tap up here, everything is moves. Everything is very responsive. Opening books is fast. Going from page to page is fast. Bringing the menu down, going into the chapters. This was an issue that I'd had with previous editions of the Kindle, is things just took too long. When I tap on something, I would wait. And I've gotten accustomed to very snappy, fast devices, as have most of us, because we have smartphones and tablets, and those are fast. Everything is quick. And so sometimes using a Kindle can feel like you've stepped back in time, and you're just going too slow. But this Kindle is the right balance of speed and, uh, of course, battery life and all the things that come along with uh, that. That's a trade-off when you increase performance and things are faster you're going to sacrifice in battery life now I've had this device for just shy of a month and I've only charged it once it still has 42 percent now I don't read every single night I try to read for maybe about 30 minutes every night and I've averaged about 20 nights uh, so far with this device that I've read for I'd say about 30 minutes and then a little bit of random reading throughout the day on a couple of different days so that's really good battery life uh, this also allows you to listen to audiobooks if you wanted to um, using uh, audible if you purchased audiobooks through audible if you haven't done that yet I've got a link down in the description below so you can get a free audiobook from audible they're not the sponsor of this video but I love audible and when I signed up for their affiliate program it allowed me to give away a free audiobook to whoever signs up so why not uh, but 
With this, I really like the speed of this device and how quickly I can get around it and open up different books. Now, one of the things that I've used my Kindle for is studying for my private pilot's license. Now, I've since got that license, but I'm working on other ratings, and having the increased pixel depth is really nice for graphics. So that's one of the biggest wins for this device is having that increased performance and also the increased 300 pixel depth is really nice when looking at those finer details. So what's my final opinion? Well, I'd say it's worth an upgrade if you have a Kindle that is, I'd say, more than three years old. If you have a Kindle that's battery life is not sufficient anymore, or perhaps the performance is just too slow, perhaps it's time for an upgrade, and the 11th edition Kindle is a fantastic option. I really like it. Like I said, I like it better than the Oasis device that I have simply because of the USB-C charging and the increased performance that I found in navigating throughout the user interface of the Kindle. So I've got links down in the description below. Make sure to check those out. If you have any questions about the device, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I hope you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it useful. But that's going to do it for now. Thanks so much for being here, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.